Hello, welcome to today's session of chemistry discussion. In today's session, we'll be talking about our main theme of how to better storytell while teaching chemistry or while teaching any other science subjects in general. Uh, and the main goal of storytelling while teaching science is to make science more, of course, exciting, wonderful, relevant, and more impactful for our students. So let's get started. So while teaching chemistry, physics, bio, or even maths in general, a lot of times we get, we get questions from our students like, how am I going to use this stuff in the real world? How is this equation or the problem that we are dealing with right now impacting my life? How am I going to use this later on while I work on a certain project, right? How, how, where do I see this? What's the relevance of all this that we are learning here? All this chemical equation, all the experiments, all the numericals, all the concepts, right? There's all these like how, why, and where questions uh, coming thrown at, thrown at us. And if you, if you look at it from a student's perspective, I feel like all these questions are pretty genuine, right? Uh, as educators, as science teachers, we've been learning science for years and years. Sometimes we, I feel like we fail to realize how difficult things can get for students, right? We fail to see this stuff, the whole discussion part from the student's point of view. Uh, for us, it's pretty intuitive, right? We've been doing this for so many, a few, so many years. Uh, but it, it's also important to realize it from a student's perspective and, and help them sort of navigate through this, right? Help them make the course, the concepts, the problems, uh, the teaching learning part relevant for the students uh, so that they could, they could make sense of what's going on so that they could relate what they learn in classroom to, to the outer world. And right, this not only helps motivate and engage the students, right, increase participation, it will ultimately affect the performance in the class and uh, our kids might not take science or chemistry going forward, but the, the, the kind of uh, learning technique and, um, uh, and the understanding process they learn in this class might be useful later on and it might translate to the other classes they might be taking on in the future. So just helping the students connect dots is a very integral, integral part of teaching uh, science and chemistry, of course. So in today's talk, we are going to focus on that one particular model or the technique that I'm, uh, that I'm about to talk. Um, it's called Johnstone's Model on Learning Chemistry. And it was, of course, developed and designed by a famous uh, Scottish educator, uh, Alex Johnstone, the picture of who is, is shown here. Uh, we are not going to go detail into this, the biography of this passionate educator, but what he did was something really amazing and something that I use and I encourage you guys to use in your classes as you are teaching science. Okay, And the main theme or the main outcome or the main goal of this model is to basically make uh, science more relevant, uh, relatable, more engaging. Um, help students connect dots between different areas of science or different components of science. And uh, I hope you guys will know about what components that I'm talking about in the next few slides. So yes, so the main focus for today's talk is going to be Johnstone's model on learning chemistry. And I say chemistry because this was first developed for chemistry, but I feel like this can be translated and used for other areas of sciences as well, okay? so. What is the model about, right? Uh, what's the Johnstone's model? So this is basically a simple illustration, a schematic of uh, Johnstone's model. So what he did is uh, he broke down the the content that we teach in chemistry class into these three components, represented by three corners of the triangle here, uh, right? Uh, so for every chemistry concepts or topics that we teach to our student, it has a macroscopic component. Uh, the components that are tangible, that are palpable, that we can see, feel, touch, smell, right? Most of the things that we do in laboratory, the experiments, the demonstration that we do in class, things that involve colors, smell, right? All the magic that happens in chemistry from a very layman perspective, those are macroscopic domains. And 
while explaining what's going on in the macroscopic side, we a lot of times we use this submicroscopic or nanoscopic explanation. We go to the molecular or atomic level and explain what's going on within the molecule. What kind of bonds are breaking? What kind of bonds are forming? What's the what's the reason for all this chemical transformation and color change and all this uh, all the changes that are happening in front of the students? That's explanation. It's the submicroscopic explanation, right? That's the particle level illustrations. I could also call it nanoscopic, right? Because a lot of times things tend to sort of diminish and miniaturize to a nanoscopic level. And the last component is the symbolic component, which is basically all the formulas, right? All the numericals, all the models, all the molecular struct formulas, let's say, that we use. Those fall under the symbolic uh, domain. So for all the topics that we teach to our students, if we can sort of connect these three dots and let our students know, hey, the numericals that we just did here, was related to the observation that you made in the lab. And that is in turn tied to the uh, submicroscopic interaction that's happening at the atomic and molecular level. I think it makes life of the student easier and they might be able to connect dots between different domains and just, uh, just might make the whole course simpler and uh, engaging for them, okay? So that's the John Stone's model. You break down the chemistry topics and units into these three triplets. We can call this chemistry triplets or chemistry domains or the areas of chemistry learning, whatever. That was what John Stone proposed, okay? So let's use it on a very, very simple topic, a topic that's something that you introduce to your students maybe in middle school, right? What is water? Here I have a uh, visual representation of what water looks like in the material uh, scale, in the macro scale. Uh, so we, we say water is a colorless, odorless liquid, right? What the student, what the middle school students see inside this jar, this liquid is the macroscopic uh, domain. And when we interpret this macroscopic domain by talking about molecules, water is made up of H2O molecules, and each H2O molecules is made up of oxygen, one oxygen atom, and two hydrogen atoms, right? So H2O is one molecule, and within this matter, within this water uh, mass, there are millions and billions of water molecules. That would be our sub-microscopic explanation, the molecular and atomic level of explanation. And when we represent each water molecule with their molecular formulas, right, using the atoms, the electrons, and bonds, that would be the symbolic representation. Very simple example, okay? Same thing with sodium chloride. Use when sodium chloride, if, if, if looked from a macroscopic perspective, it looks, it is, it is a solid, it's a white solid, right? What's going on in the sub-microscopic scale is there are sodium atoms, positive sodium atoms, some negative chlorine uh, ions, um, and they're forming this unit cell, right? Very ordered structure. That's why sodium chloride is crystalline. That's the submicroscopic explanation. For the symbolic part, we, we basically use the molecular formula or the simplest empirical formula, whatever you call it, or the ionic representation, right? So these are just the basics of where John Stone's model can be used. Let's, let's go one step up and try to use this on a chemical reaction, right? Uh, chemical reaction, probably you introduce chemical reaction to students when they're in seventh grade, eighth grade maybe, right? So one of the most commonly used experiments uh, or commonly done, ex done experiment uh, for high school or even middle school student is the reaction between silver nitrate and sodium chloride, right? When you mix a solution of silver nitrate and so sodium chloride, you are going to get that thick white precipitate of silver chloride, right? Uh, sorry. So that's the, the observation that the students see, the clear solution before when they mix it, there's a white precipitate out of a sudden. The magic reaction happens, right? That's the macroscopic. Now, we break this down into ionic level, the molecular level, atomic level, right? This is the sample of sodium chloride. What's going on inside is the interaction between sodium and chloride uh, ions. 
this is the sample of silver nitrate we have silver cations and nitrate anions once you mix them that's what's going to happen the silver chloride will precipitate down it's not going to break down into ions whereas sodium nitrate is going to float around in the form of sodium ion and nitrate ions right that level of explanation is the submicroscopic or nanoscopic explanation and then you tell the students to draw the ionic reactions right the net ionic the total ionic equation all that stuff and that's the symbolic representation so you can translate the simple water and sodium chloride model that we talked about earlier that could be used for middle school students to a chemical reaction that you teach to early high school or late, late middle school students okay and it can be further translated to even uh, let's say complex concepts right uh, here I'm taking an example of a very basic combustion reaction of methane uh, the reaction that is highly used in <clears throat> natural gas combustion or a biogas combustion widely used in the village areas uh, as a fuel source right uh, so even that reaction can be broken down that process can be broken down into the three corners of Johnstone's model right the fire that they are seeing that the students are seeing um, as a result of burning methane or hydrocarbon that's the macroscopic part right and you can go down to the level of what's going as methane molecules interacting with oxygen molecules right uh, you can talk about the collision theory you can talk about the bonds being broken bonds being formed the activation energy required in the form of spark uh, the 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 right orientation of collision the energy of activation all that stuff that comes under the sub microscopic explanation and at the end you sort of represent the whole process using a chemical reaction using symbolic notations right that's the symbolic representation so yeah you can use uh, Johnston's Johnston's model for uh, relevant and very useful chemical reactions like this or chemical transformations like this uh, one other example that we usually perform in a lab this is a combustion reaction of propane uh, that can be done using a coffee cup calorimeter or a bomb calorimeter in a lab this is a setup for a bomb calorimeter I'm not going to talk about the detail so you basically burn your hydrocarbon you measure the change in temperature and you find the enthalpy of the reaction students basically record the temperature set up all these things that comes under the macroscopic observation macroscopic domain the macroscopic part of triplet right uh, again once you break this process down to the atomic and molecular level uh, using collision theory bond breaking bond forming all that comes under the sub microscopic level and once you represent that process with equation and use formulas to to find out the heat change heat flow within the reaction the enthalpy change all that is the symbolic part of the model okay so uh, that's basically what i wanted to talk about today the johnstone's model of learning chemistry uh, what I would recommend at this point for you guys, if you think this could be useful uh, to introduce to your kids, I would what I would do is I'd put down a template in the description bo box down below, so you can download that template. Uh, it basically consists of the Johnstone's triangle with the blank boxes, so you can use that for any 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 chemistry topics that you teach in class. What I would recommend is for the first three or four chapters, you show it to the students by yourself you describe what Johnstone model is and why it is important to sort of understand and and use the use the model for few concepts yourselves as a teacher and after four or five uses uh, examples you can ask the students to use the Johnstone model and see if they can sort of connect the dot within a topic and see if they can sort of uh, distribute the different things they've learned into these three corners of the triangle. I think that would be a really useful practice for the students and just make the class more concept more exciting. And I'd also add, like I said before, uh, 
this was developed for chemistry and chemistry educators use this but i feel like even physics and bio and biochemistry other areas of sciences could use it right um, so yeah just give it a shot and see what you think about it uh, like i said again the whole goal is to you know help our students navigate through this science process with fun with participation with engagements so that not only the class becomes becomes fun but also our students retain the concept they do well in class and they also connect these dots with other subjects that they are learning or they will be taking in the future okay so yeah that's that's the goal so i'm gonna end today's talk with this beautiful quote from albert einstein where he says education is not just the learning of facts but the training of the mind to think and i think i approach my class with this code in mind all the time and i want you to think about it maybe most of you already do it but for those of you who are trying to sort of enrich your teaching learning process please take a read and um, it's it's a beautiful concept and very uh, relevant and something we we all should do Okay, so thank you for listening and I'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, take care. Bye.